Hello in today's crypto update video. So first of all, I'd like to thank you very, very much for helping me reach over 4,000 subscribers. This is a big milestone for this channel. I know I've been struggling since 2018 to grow this channel. I've been basically putting out content almost every day since 2018 throughout the bear market. And it's been a struggle, but I'd like to thank you very much for making this possible. That's great, really, really great news. I think it's on the way up to 5,000 probably by the end of march i would say just at the rate that it's grown at the moment it's absolutely amazing so many new people have come into crypto so that's great and that's why i wanted to do a premiere here because i do want to be able to chat in the live chat as well so if you have any questions about crypto anything at all uh, just let me know in the live chat of course if you're watching this live and uh, i will reply back to you in the live chat but Let's talk about some of the projects that I haven't covered in a very, very long time. And uh, these projects have been doing pretty well, right? They've been working in the background. I mean, especially one of them. And this is, of course, Phantasma Chain. And uh, yeah, Phantasma Chain is a project that started off on the NEO blockchain. If you don't already know that, it started off as an ICO there. And uh, this was back in 2018. And it was an NEP5 token. So you could only trade it within the NEO blockchain then. They've migrated to their own blockchain back in 2019, at the end of 2019. There was a delay with their mainnet at the beginning. There was a lot of fun at the time, I remember that. But uh, towards the end of 2019, they released their mainnet. So ever since then, these guys have been hard at work. They've been pushing out a lot of content, and I think that they really deserve the shout out. So we're going to be looking at what are the latest updates that we've got from Phantasma Chain. Then I'm going to be talking about the latest updates from Elastos, because that's another one that I haven't covered in a long time, the decentralized internet. What have they been up to? What are they doing? And then finally, I'm going to be talking about ontology. So again, just a kind reminder to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video or dislike if you don't. But if you like it, it's going to help with the algorithm. It's going to help my channel be found. So that's great because it'll help me grow as well. And then I can push out more content to you. I'm going to try and do videos every single day on this channel. At the weekend, sometimes I'm going to be doing two videos uh, while the pandemic is still on just because I have more time. But uh, yeah, daily videos is my aim. So you're going to be getting a daily video from me. So please do subscribe if you wish to support this channel. Most of my content is Polkadot related. So just to get back to uh, Phantasma chain here. So again, where can you actually get Phantasma? And this isn't financial advice. I'm doing this for educational purposes only. But people that see this may be wondering, where can they actually get this token? So before we talk about them. So you can get them on KuCoin, on Hotbit, and on Uniswap as well. Now, I don't recommend Hotbit just because they lock a lot of liquidity. KuCoin is probably the best centralized exchange that Sol has been on for a very long time. Uniswap now because they, they are actually on Ethereum too. So now they're on three different blockchains. They're on NEO, which is the initial chain. Then they're on their own Phantasma chain. And finally, they're on Ethereum as well as an ERC20 token. So it may sound confusing, but within their wallet, and again, you can download that if you go to their website, phantasma.io, which we can see here on CoinGecko, probably one of the best websites aside from CoinMarketCap, which pretty much tells you all the different details you need about a project when you're searching it up, when you're looking it up. And it helps you with your research too. So, uh, yeah, I mean, KuCoin is probably the best, but uh, you can swap to ERC20 if you want to use Uniswap. But now with the Ethereum fees being so high, why would you want to do that, right? The only reason why you'd want to change to an ERC20 version, and it wouldn't be sold, it would be actually their fuel token, which is called KCAL. Uh, so uh, you could look that up if you want. KCAL is the uh, ticker symbol for KCAL, which is their fuel token. It, it basically gets generated if you stake soul in your in your wallet that's all you have to do you just have to stake it and once you stake it within 24 hours you start to generate phantasma energy known as kcal so enough about that but let's talk about what these guys have actually done so they are really uh, like they're they're basically a whole ecosystem you could think of phantasma as a whole ecosystem kind of like what polkadot are doing but on a much smaller scale in the sense that they have products but they're not really like not many people have actually started building on them, but they, are, they, are, they do have a backlog of different small companies like indie games, for example, that are developing on them. And a lot of them, a lot of their focus now has been on NFTs. And that's why I really wanted to give these guys a shout out and kind of go through their tweets here, the latest tweets, at least. And this is, of course, in relation to the NFTs. So what they've done now is they've onboarded a lot of uh, graphic designers, a lot of artists 
a lot of digital artists and what they're doing is they're basically creating their own digital art as a non-fungible token and then they can sell that digital art to whoever finds value in it or thinks it would be valuable at some point in the future just because of their work right now they did conduct various giveaways for digital art but as you can see here this is how it looks so for example um, this one here this was uh, from Vic Art she's got 100 followers on Twitter she's a digital artist and she's produced an NFT and I'm going to show you how you can use Ghost Market I'm not going to do like a dedicated tutorial but I'm just going to quickly look through it and Ghost Market is the website where you can actually mint your own NFTs you basically upload a photo you pay the fee and then you generate that NFT so it's absolutely awesome it's it's amazing how easy they've made it and I got to give them a lot of credit for that knowing how small their team is knowing that Vincent I mean I've been chatting to this guy like from back in 2018 I believe it was early 2018 he was like a big supporter he still is a big supporter of both Neo and Switchio but uh, he he was working on Neo Economy which was uh, which was his uh, his website and I think he still he still does a lot of updates on that website but now most of his focus is towards Phantasma Chain and he's done a great job at creating this website the Ghost Market with help from Bill as well from Phantasma Chain so absolutely amazing work here as you can see all the digital artists are basically finding out about phantasma chain and they're creating the tokenized version of their art and now they're able to sell it so there are people out there that are buying so as you can see here this one's listed for 1500 soul and it's infused with 1k cal so yeah i mean they've got games as well building i know i've done a tutorial on one of the games that they've um, that they've bonded with it's basically they've partnered with this game actually 22 ors is the name it's a racing game uh, but what's interesting is that this game has integrated into steam so a lot of steam players will be able to play that game from steam and then they'll be able to create a wallet and then they'll find out about blockchain if they don't already know and um, they can basically take advantage of the fact that you can get nfts non-fungible tokens to design your own vehicles so that's pretty awesome right and again there is a limited number of vehicles that you can design of course and you need certain types of nfts to be able to design those vehicles so that's just something to keep in mind there are some limitations as to what you can actually design but nonetheless you can actually own that vehicle like i, I have a vehicle as well on phantasma chain uh, somebody actually donated that vehicle to me just to test it out to play it and of course you do need the gaming license too but do check that video i did it should pop up on the top right hand corner if you're watching this on youtube if you're watching this on other platforms do check the uh, link in the description of the video uh, to uh, which will take you directly to that video just to, to kind of understand what that game is about so there's another game building here which is crusaders dynasty so as you can see here they've got a steam store as well so yeah a lot of indie games are developing on phantasma chain and and they're going to keep on growing they've got oracles as well so it's like i would say a miniature version of polkadot and the reason i say miniature is because these guys don't get the marketing that they deserve right they should be getting more marketing they've been doing a great job i know that people have been fighting them back in the past because there was a lot of hype but not enough development so they've come a long way and as you can see the hard work pays off right all the all the digital artists now know about phantasma chain and their main focus has now become nfts and likely gaming as well as going to be another aspect so they're definitely gonna eventually surpass engine in my opinion just at the the rate they're growing and of course the fact that they're cheap right from free to cheap right you just need to pay that transaction fee pretty much and then you can mint stuff so the fact that they're doing all this at a very low cost is is inspiring and and it is going to attract a lot of uh, a lot of um, indie games and also um, digital artists so yeah i mean if we look here through their tweets um what do we have there they've got some partnership here so they're they're basically growing as you can see here they're basically growing with all these different partners uh they're who are they partnering with here so their grow your base is partnering with ghost market and phantasma chain so as you can see here they've created their own nfts which of course they can sell if they want to and uh yeah they're doing a lot of nft giveaways as you can see here so yeah yeah, I mean, just looking at this, like most of their tweets are in relation to a digital art. And it, and it just shows you that they're going to specialize in that. They're going to specialize in that. And these are all the different programming languages that are supported. So if you're a, 
a game developer or simply want to develop something, a DAP or something on Phantasma, these are all the different languages, uh, programming languages that they support, the common ones, Python, JavaScript, Java, Golang as well, the Kraken NFT, they're advertising that as well, that's uh, one of the cars that you can use with the Kraken symbol from the Kraken exchange. And uh, what's interesting, like this is this is the last update that they've got. This was posted four hours ago. So Vincent, who is basically the guy behind a lot of the development, a lot of the recent development is behind Ghost Market as well from Phantasma Chain. I mean, it's amazing. One guy has done so much and he doesn't even have a development background. He actually, he was a network admin. He was on my channel a long time ago and we spoke about Neo Economy and the Neo News Today because I used to cover a lot of content on Neo and... Um, this guy, I mean, he's just been learning so much and he's just been, you know, working working over time just to try and get things done. So, you know, full he's got my full respect from that point of view, right? Now, he's going to go to a music channel, actually. Uh, it's going to be in, 20, in less than 24 hours. So it's going to be sometime tomorrow. And uh, this music channel, he's going to talk about NFTs in this in this interview. And um, this guy's channel has like over 76,000, no, over 74,000 subscribers when I last checked that. So it is a big channel, right? So I think Phantasma Chain are going to get a lot of visibility from non-crypto people, right? From musicians and probably from digital artists too, right? Uh, so that's going to be interesting, right? The fact that uh, they're going to spread the word out there. They're going out there. They're not only focusing on marketing within the cryptocurrency ecosystem or within the cryptocurrency community to crypto content creators but they're also looking out outside of this space to try and bring people in so that's really good now this is how ghost market looks like so ghost market is is basically ghostmarket.io if you go there and you go to a slash mint you can create an nft by clicking on the tab up on the top right hand corner you choose what type of um, nft you want you can upload the image you give it a title you specify what type it is, if it's art, music, game, NSFW. So that's probably what he's going to talk about in tomorrow's interview because you can choose the music type as well. So I'm assuming that you can make music as digital art. <laughs> so that's awesome. And then you can own that. And you can give it like different attributes. Now I'm not sure what these different attribute types are. But here we can see that your NFT attribute type and value. And this should be between 3 and 15 characters. Each for the type and one for the value. Now I would have to see an example of this because I'm not sure what it is, but as you can see, they're all optional. So you don't actually have to give it an attribute type. I'm assuming this is used for game NFTs. Like for example, if you want to have a character which has the attack, which has the defense, like maybe for a card game or something, and then you could give them different attributes. I'm assuming that's what it might be used for. Maybe that's why they've made this optional as well. But as you can see here, you can specify how much you want to um, you want to ask for for this nft and if you want it to be posted on the ghost market directly and if you want it to be locked or not okay okay so you can create you can create an nft which will only be accessible to the current nft owner as well so yeah pretty awesome here then there's of course the marketplace if you go to their marketplace here you can see they've got different types of NFTs. And again, this is not a sponsored video or anything. Just don't think this is sponsored. They haven't paid me for this at all. I'm simply covering it just to because I appreciate the hard work that they've done. So here, here you can see that they're selling NFTs here for 2000 KCAL for 0.0017 ETH and so on. So it's compatible with all three blockchains here. Actually with two blockchains because I don't see anything on NEO. Um, so please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I only see stuff on... Phantasma chain and on Ethereum. So I don't think they've made it Neo compatible yet. I'm assuming that's probably in the works. Let's see. Oh, there is Neo as well. Okay, zero. Okay, so that they're probably working on this. They're probably working, hence why they created a tab. And then when they're gonna do that, then we're gonna be able to uh, to use that as well. But yeah, nevertheless, um, let me know what you think of Phantasma, by the way. Uh, I mean, this is huge, right? The fact that they've done this and it's very cheap to mint, whereas with the uh, engine, it's it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, trust me. I mean, it was like 10 bucks in engine tokens just to be able to mint something silly, like uh, a game item or something. So it's very, very expensive for game developers. So a lot of them have actually left engine, unfortunately for engine, but uh, I wonder if they're going to come to Phantasma 
seeing as uh, how easy it is to create NFTs and so on. And look at all these different features here. I'm probably gonna have to do a tutorial on this at some point and create my own NFT in the tutorial just to show you how it works. But anyway, that's it enough. Uh, that's enough about Phantasma Chain. We're gonna move on to the next topic, and this is the last us, ELA with the ticker symbol now basically they're the decentralized internet or that's what they're trying to achieve these guys have been around for a very long time they've been developing ever since now the circulating supply is 18.9 million 23 million is the total supply or it's gonna grow i think because this is not like a max supply it's it's inflationary so it's constantly being generated and the price has not been doing too bad considering the last time i've covered them was like one dollar something so it's gone 4x since then but of course compared to other projects uh, which have gone 10x 20x 100x you know it's not that much and i'm sure a lot the elastos community is not too happy considering that they've held so tight for so long some people probably left but um probably one of their biggest updates here from the 14th of january is in relation to hive 2.0 which is an upgrade that allows developers to create apps where users control how their data is stored and have actual options like choosing their own vault linking their data to their digital identity creating financial incentives for hive nodes and more so yeah it's all about digital identity now and and i've actually done a tutorial on the elastos mobile app elast os is the name I'm, I'm not sure what updates they've done ever since then within that uh, mobile app. I'll have to look it up to see what's been upgraded there, what's been changed. But nevertheless, I mean, these guys are hard at work. They're doing things, right? They're not sleeping. But it just is what it is, right? They've been through the bear market. So they're just trying to recover from that. Like the community has lost a lot of the hype or, or they've lost um, hope, I think, during the bear market. It's normal. A lot of people have lost hope during the bear market but nevertheless they've been updating a lot they've been going to different uh, events i mean they're trying to they're like talking to all these different companies you know so they're trying to uh, to expand and what's interesting here like this was posted by their ceo rong chen he's the elastas founder uh, three os's windows linux and mac os for the web one era Two OS's for the mobile social for the web 2.0 era, Android and iOS. Guess how many OS's for the web 3.0 era will survive, in my opinion. <laughs> if core teams don't believe in we have a fair chance, we wouldn't be here and fighting. So as you can see here, they're basically showing us how it's going to work. You're going to have Elastos in the middle, connecting to all these different chains and ecosystems, you could call them, because we're going to have Cardano, Neo, uh, Polkadot as well, Bitcoin, Chainlink, ethereum and so on so they are looking at polkadot and this is awesome because they are seeing potential in polkadot and all these projects that have been around for so long now are seeing polkadot success so they're trying to write off that success too right they're trying to join the success because you know what they say if you can't beat them you need to join them so that's what they're trying to do uh, when they see the success of polkadot they're trying to see how can they integrate within polkadot to take part in this success to be out in the spotlight to get new money in because this is the whole purpose right the whole purpose is to get adoption and people to buy their token or their coin so that everybody can profit everyone can be happy everyone can be can can have money and uh, and then there's more development funding uh, more and more people can join and build and uh, you know the whole the whole thing expands than the whole ecosystem so uh, yeah they're basically focusing a lot on digital identity and i know that they've got some competition now but the fact that elastos have been around for so long they might have that edge in the market because when they have to show their portfolio to show what they've uh, what they've worked on you know they can convince people that uh, they've been around for longer than a lot of these newer ones like we've got killed protocol now which uh, i've done a review on recently which are also working for digital regarding digital identity and uh, they're on Polkadot and they're going to be, uh, they're, they're already on Rokoku testnet and they're going to be a parachain on Polkadot. So it'll be interesting to see how projects like Elastos, like the decentralized internet using digital identity is going to compete with something like Kilt Protocol. However, Kilt Protocol are only focusing on digital identity, right? So we'll have to see which ones are going to get used. Then we've also got Ontology, which are working on digital identity and they're also going to Polkadot and we'll talk about them in a moment. But you just kind of to show that right now one hundred thousand dollars of liquidity funded by their democratic dao cyber republic has been added to uniswap for the wrapped version of ela so they've actually created a wrapped version of elastos on ethereum to generate hype and to get people and maybe liquidity too to generate liquidity this was on the 2nd of february 
to basically get and make Elastos known, right? And how can you make him known if you go to Uniswap you do because it goes up in the ranks and then if you go on Dex tools then you can see if it's uh, being heavily traded or not and if it is then people are gonna find out about it they're gonna look into it they're gonna join the telegram group and this is how you grow a community so I think they've made the right choice in that sense and they've also got merge mining with Bitcoin this has been like developed a long time ago and uh, what that basically means is that you can share um, you can use your GPU to mine not only Bitcoin but also ELA so that's something good um, now they're talking about the Uniswap fees here, of course, because we know that uh, they're very high. So it's probably not the best time to launch on Ethereum, but better late than never, you know. So yeah, if, if they would have done this maybe late last year, they would have had more chance just because Ethereum wasn't priced so high and the fees were not so crazy as they are now. Like people are paying 50 bucks, 100 bucks to trade on Uniswap now. So unless you're buying big bags, it's probably not worth it. Any newbie who's also who, who only wants to get like say 100 bucks worth of worth of a token are probably not going to go to Uniswap, right? They're going to get wrecked. Imagine paying more for the fee than you get the tokens. Like, what's the point for that, right? It's no use. So they're going to be using centralized exchanges for that. So um, yeah, I mean they're they, they've been tweeting quite a lot, as you can see here. They're constantly building. Opulos, right? These are, this is a soft sovereign identity and music in Web 3.0, and um, they're, they've partnered with Elastos. So we're still seeing some partnerships taking place here, and that's good. Oh, okay. So Elastos's DID solution takes another step forward into the real world with Opulos app. D D Dito Music's newly launched DeFi platform, in addition to DID integration, ELA will be supported for staking as well. Okay, so they've integrated Elastos into their platform. To be able to stake Elastos because I remember staking Elastos was a bit of a nightmare back in 2018 and even 2019 uh, with their wallet. I know that they, they had some problems with that wallet at the time so it wasn't the best to, to stake on. It was a web wallet as well but I think they've come a long way since then so they've definitely made it easier to stake now. Now Elastos has been mentioned in uh, finance.yahoo.com as one of the seven promising altcoin projects to kick off 2021 so they've got some uh, marketing from that as well so yeah they're constantly pushing updates as you can see here I mean there's there's constantly something going on so we'll have to see what's what's gonna happen like when are we gonna see the decentralized internet really go live with Elastos so that's something that uh, I'm looking forward to seeing so I wish them good luck with that and we'll keep an eye out on them and likely do a follow-up video in the future but for now let's talk about ontology which is trading at $1.19 I mean this price is not the best price that we've seen for ontology i know that it's been struggling to break past one dollar for a long time now but it finally did it again so we'll have to see if it's ever going to get to that all-time high again maybe with the polkadot integration but what have ontology been up to well they've been tweeting about uh, elon musk as you can see here <laughs> hoping that he's going to be using uh, digital identity <laughs> and um, basically retweeting about polkadot they're looking at the Polkadot ecosystem again, as I was saying. So this is an overview of the whole Polkadot ecosystem, all the different projects. So a lot of these have been covered by me, but there are just so many to cover, so many to cover. I'm probably like in a couple of months time, I'm probably going to be done with a lot of these. And then if you come to my channel and just search for a project on Polkadot, you're likely going to find a video on it, a review video just to kind of summarize what it's about to help you then do more research. So yeah. Uh, onto red pocket so they've been doing this again i mean they've had this um, they've had this kind of marketing in the past where you can use the onto app or the onto dap on your phone to be able to get uh, to be able to get these um, kind of like giveaway packages so you get like a, a package that you can open up and then you find either an nft or or some ont tokens or some ong coins or some ong tokens sorry and uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's nice, right? It's something that you can uh, you can share for the holiday season. And of course, there was the Chinese New Year as well. So they posted about that. And uh, what else do we have from them? They've also been on the Crypto Coin Show. Uh, they've been discussed there. Uh, what else? What else do we have? Yeah, so they're just basically talking about Coinbase and how they're going to be using digital identity. And now that Coinbase did say that they're 
potentially gonna list ontology but then they also said the same for polkadot and we still haven't seen them list them i don't know what they're waiting for i don't know if it's political or what the heck they're doing but um i don't know i mean we're gonna have to see we're gonna have to see but nonetheless i mean ontology are trying to um, constantly develop to market themselves uh, with the digital identity i mean will they be used in china eventually now with covid and stuff who knows right it's possible but um they definitely need to onboard something they need to do something because the community wasn't the happiest in terms of their uh, in terms of their development right because it's hard to get it's hard to get people to build on ontology i mean considering that these guys have tried to survive throughout the bear market and now all these new platforms like polkadot have come into fruition i mean most of these projects are now trying to route the, the polkadot hype so ontology are trying to look for ways to get onto that hype and then hopefully get onboarded from there and to have other companies maybe building on ontology so yeah we'll have to keep an eye out on them but that's it from today's video i don't want to take any more of your time it's already been just over almost 26 minutes now i think since i've been talking so thank you very much for watching this video please make sure to subscribe if you didn't and uh, i'd like to thank you and see you in my next video take care bye bye